Hello, Pokemon Masters, Bug Toby here, and while playing Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, the big thing I've been looking out for is what's new? What's different that wasn't in the original Diamond and Pearl? By looking at those differences, we're able to get into the minds of the creators of the game, Game Freak and Ilka, and we can work out exactly what their intentions were. Were they planning to reference something upcoming, or were they just trying to expand, expand the lore and expand the world of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl? And they added a big one, for the Sinnoh region is known for its myths, the myths and stories that you can find mostly in the Kanalei of Library. It's like the home of the mythos of the Sinnoh region, and a new myth can be found there in the library. On the middle floor, there is a book titled The Sea Legend, a book about Manaphy that actually expands the lore in a big way, and I have a little Pokemon theory on it. So be sure to join me, let me know what you think about this theory in the comment section, and if you leave a comment, you're in with a chance of winning a copy of Legends Arceus when it comes out. Also, don't forget to challenge the like button to a battle, and then when it says, hey, look, I'm gonna send out Scizor, please don't send out a fire type, and it sends out Scizor, send out a fire type for that quad damage. That is such a random situation, I don't know where I got that from. And let's jump into my theory about the sea legend. Oh, but before I jump into this legend about Manaphy, let me tell you of a different legend. Today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. With over 600 champions to collect, campaign, PvP, dungeons, faction rewards, you'll be wondering, much like me, how do they cram all of this into one little mobile game? A game that you can download for the price of absolutely free using the link at the top of the description or the QR code on screen. And with over 300,000 nearly perfect reviews on the App Store, like me, you might be wondering, how can mobile games look this good nowadays? You're gonna love this attention to detail and the world crafting that's going into creating Teleria. But I know you've heard about Raid before, what's new? Well, as it stands, if you download the game today, you'll be able to take on the biggest, baddest clan boss, the Hydra, a beautifully designed creature ready to take you on with four of its six different heads, each one with a different ability. Like the Head of Suffering, which shares the pain that you put onto it back to you, or the Head of Mischief that likes to steal your champion's buffs. So strategy here is going to be absolutely key for victory. Oh, and if that's not enough for you, right now Raid is giving away a super limited edition champion. Some of you may recognize him already as an esports superstar. It's simple, as a champion in the game. There's never been a better time to get started, so again, click that link at the top of the description or scan the UQR code on screen, you're gonna get a whole bunch of freebies. You'll get an epic champion, 200 silver, an energy refill, an experience boost, and an ancient shard so that you're ready to summon more awesome champions as soon as you get into the game, and all of your treasure will be waiting for you right here. So what are you waiting for? Click that link at the top of the description or scan the QR code on screen, and you can jump into Raid Shadow Legends today. And thank you to Raid for sponsoring this video. So Pokemon Masters, I, I think the first thing I should tell you is what exactly this myth says. Most of the Pokemon myths are stored on the top floor of the Canalive Library, but on the center floor in the center bookshelf, there is a myth, a book called The Sea Legend. Its texts say that it was only discovered recently and its ancient writings were decoded. Would you like to read what it says? Of course, I'll read it to you now. Once upon a time in the East Sea, there was a Pokemon known as The Prince. A brave human asked the Pokemon living in the sea to see the prince. Mantike, Weasel, and a Quillfish with huge spikes acknowledged the human's bravery and joined them. Together, they set off in a boat over the sunset streaked sea, sailing through the ocean gate, stretched over the waves. News of this reached the ears of the prince, who went to meet the brave little party at the seaside hollow. And that is it. A brave traveler spoke to some Pokemon. There was a particularly spiky quillfish. And then he went to meet the sea prince. The sea prince was like really impressed by this. And that does make sense because this is probably a reference to the ancient Hisui region, the time before it was called Sinnoh, where people and Pokemon were living relatively separate lives. People and Pokemon didn't naturally get on. This ultra spiky quillfish I've already kind of theorized is probably like uh, one of those, are they called like alpha Pokemon? The ones that are enraged with the big eyes that are slightly bigger. That's probably what this quillfish is. And it's interesting that the other companions here are Mantike and Weasel because that immediately evokes imagery of the Pokemon Ranger movie because those were like the two new water types that were being shown off in that movie, the Pokemon Ranger Manaphy movie. 
where Manaphy is directly referred to as being the Sea Prince. So it makes perfect sense that this is a legend about Manaphy. Also, given that all of the other legends and myths that appear in the Canalive Library appear to be about legendary and mythical Pokemon of the Sinnoh region, this has got to be Manaphy's legend. So there you go, case closed. It's a reference to the Hisui region. We'll learn more about it in Legends Arceus. But no, because this isn't the only book about Manaphy that's changed between Diamond and Pearl and Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. In the mansion of one Mr. Backlot, there was, in the original Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, a book that referenced Manaphy, that showed a Manaphy. This is how you got Manaphy in your Pokedex if you didn't have a copy of Pokemon Ranger and you couldn't transfer the egg over. While there is still a book in Mr. Backlot's mansion, it's not a book about Manaphy, it's just a random book. So what happened to that book? Well, maybe it's been deciphered, it's legends recorded, and now it sits back on the shelf in the Canalive Library. And Mr. Backlot is an interesting fellow. He has this incredible mansion and this garden that is an attraction for tourists to come and see. And the reason that this garden is so, so interesting is because it houses rare Pokemon that don't appear anywhere else in the region. Or so he says, his butler slash assistant is actually the best employee in the world. And every time he says, hey, there's this really rare Pokemon living in my garden, the, the assistant goes out to find the Pokemon and catch it to add it to the garden. The Pokemon don't come there naturally, but this is what Mr. Backlot's all about, creating environments in which people and Pokemon would want to live together in these especially rare and interesting uh, ways. I say this to transition to the next thing that we know about Mr. Backlot, in that he is the founder and creator of Amity Square that appears in Hearthone City. A space where you can run around freely with your Pokemon, it's quite the local attraction, but it's also not just some random garden, but is also the site of ancient ruins that appear in the Sinnoh region. Ancient ruins that don't appear anywhere else in Sinnoh, and again, may well be referenced or we might see in Legends Arceus. Okay, so we've got Mr. Backlot. We've got, he's got money, he's got power, he's got the ability to curate and create these interesting garden spaces where he tries to get rare Pokemon to come to. And we know that he may well have an interest in researching legendary Pokemon. It may well be the case that he is the one who deciphered the legend of the seed Pokemon. And at minimum, I do believe that last bit. There's no way that they happen to coincidentally change two things about Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl that were in the original Diamond and Pearl, that being this new Sinnoh myth of a book about Manaphy and a book about Manaphy in Mr. Backlot's mansion that is now gone. Those two things are connected. But if I want to extend the theory a little bit further, I am beginning to wonder if Mr. Backlot is in fact the founder and creator of the Romanus Park, a park that acts as a special curated environment, a tourist attraction spot where people can encounter legendary Pokemon. He already has Amity Square and he has his own garden where he tries to get rare Pokemon to appear. Perhaps he has placed legendary Pokemon here to get people to go to the park. This would explain what he was doing with the book about Manaphy and Diamond and Pearl and why it's now back there because he's done researching Manaphy. He knows that he's not gonna find Manaphy. It is a Pokemon that is mythical. But with legendary Pokemon, he's managed to capture a few of them and put them in this park. And he has designed these ruins and relics to give you access to these legendary Pokemon if you're powerful enough. And we know that he may have had a hand in it because these statues that appear in a lot of these different locations exactly match the ones that appear in his mansion. Granted, these statues appear in other locations across the Sinnoh region, like in the Old Chateau, but effectively all they are is a... Actually, do they appear in the Old Chateau? I know they appear in some other places, but they would appear to be a reference, a symbol of high life, rich people in the Sinnoh region. I think the Pokemon League maybe has some, although again, now I'm, I'm doubting that. The point is, in the Sinnoh region, it's only the affluent who have access to these statues and the whole of the Romanus Park and all of these ruins are decorated with them. So I'm thinking that maybe Mr. Backlot, who already has experience creating spaces for people to go and sightsee amazing Pokemon, is perhaps responsible. And that's why he was researching Manaphy and ultimately managed to decipher the legend of the sea Pokemon. The sea's legend. Or maybe it was just his butler, because his butler is an absolute hero. But you'll have to let me know what you think about this comment, of course, in the comment section down below. And if you leave a comment, you're in with the chance of winning a copy of Legends Arceus when it comes out. Furthermore, don't forget to challenge the like button to a battle. And when the like button is like, hey, I'm going to send out a sizzle, please don't use a fire type, immediately send out a fire type to get that quad damage. This is a fun little theory. Thank you all for watching. And of course, 
So high, Pokemon Masters. And once again, a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. Again, don't forget to click that link at the top of the description or scan the QR code on screen.